You're watching Tag TV. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Usma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 28th of July. Outrage over Rashtrapatni remark row in Indian Parliament. BJP demands apology from Congress. Sri Lanka Parliament extends emergency amid continued crisis. And IMF says it is ready to support Bangladesh after loan request. And now for all the details. Both the houses of the Indian Parliament on Thursday witnessed ruckus over opposition Congress party leader Adi Ranjan Chaudhary's Rashtrapatni remark for President Draupadi Murmu. Ruling Bharatiya Janata Party accused Congress of demeaning President Murmu and demanded apology from Chaudhary as well as interim Congress President Sonia Gandhi. Opposition Congress leader Adhir Ranjan Chaudhary's Rashtrapatni comment in reference to President of India Draupadi Murmu has drawn flag. Both houses of the parliament, the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha on Thursday witnessed fiery protest by ruling BJP, Bharti Janata Party over his remark. BJP Minister Smriti Irani hit out at interim Congress President Sonia Gandhi and said that the letter sanctioned the humiliation of President Murmu through male Congress leaders. Irani accused Congress of demeaning President Murmu and said the country knows that the opposition party is anti-tribal, anti-Dalit and anti-women. Adhi Ranjan Chaudhary maintained that he regrets his slip of tongue. Sonia Ji sanctioned the humiliation of a poor woman who was sent to the highest office in this country. You sanctioned the insult of every Indian citizen due to your male Congress workers and leaders have continued to demean the office of the President of India. Apologize to the nation. Rasta Patni Nikal Chuke hai meri juban se, galati se, chuk hui. Is ka matab phansi ki takte pe char jau to kahiye, suli pe char jau to kahiye. He made the remark during Congress protest against Financial Crime Fighting Agency, the Enforcement Directorates questioning Sonia Gandhi in the National Herald case. When asked about the row earlier in the day, the Congress interim president said Adhir Ranjan Chaudhary has already apologized. Defence Chief of Maldives, Major General Abdullah Shamal on Thursday held meeting with his Indian counterpart and discussed ways to strengthen the defence cooperation between the two countries. Earlier, he laid a wreath in honour of slain soldiers at the National War Memorial in capital New Delhi before receiving the Guard of Honour. Maldivian National Defence Force Chief Major General Abdullah Shamal on Thursday paid tribute to India's fallen heroes at the National War Memorial in capital New Delhi. The Maldives Defence Chief is on a six-day visit to India to bolster defence-related ties between the two countries. Apart from defence and security partnerships, India and Maldives have in recent times expanded their strategic cooperation, including focusing on counter-terrorism and counter-insurgency. Shamal also received a guard of honour from the Indian Tri Forces in the launch of country's defence ministry. The two Asian countries on July 20 signed a memorandum of understanding with an aim to mutually further code digitization and foster startups and tech companies. Lying near strategic shipping lanes in the Indian Ocean, Maldives is critical in the battle for influence between India and China, which have repeatedly clashed along their Himalayan border in recent years. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's parliament has extended a state of emergency declared by President Ranil Vikramasinghe in a bid to get a grip on a political and economic crisis that has forced a change of leadership while trying to find a way out of the country's worst economic crisis. Sri Lanka's parliament approved the extension of a state of emergency for a month on Wednesday. 
a lawmaker said, in a bid to get a grip on a political and economic crisis that has forced a change of leadership. Then acting President Ranil Vikramasinghe had declared a state of emergency on July 17. It allows for the military to be given powers to detain people, limit public gatherings and search private property. The extension means it will continue for a month before it must be approved again. Vikramasinghe won a parliamentary vote to become president three days after he declared the emergency and a week after Godabai Rajpaksa fled the country and resigned from his post of president in the face of widespread protests. The country of 22 million people has been crippled by an economic crisis with shortages of fuel, food and other necessities. The protest, which culminated with crowds swarming into the official presidential residence before Rajpaksa fled on July 13, have largely fizzled out. Also on Wednesday, Rajpaksa was granted permission to stay a further 14 days in Singapore, where he landed two weeks ago via Maldives, Reuters quoting its sources reported. The Singaporean government has said he has not been granted asylum but was in the country on a private visit. Vikramasinghe, who served six terms as Prime Minister, took over as President in a parliamentary vote after Rajpaksa quit. He has outlined plans to have a donor conference involving India, China and Japan after Sri Lanka secures a rescue line from the International Monetary Fund IMF. He said on July 18 that negotiations with the IMF were nearing a conclusion. Moving on. Flood-affected residents of Gilgit Baltistan have demanded reconstruction of dams and bridges in the region to rebuild their lives hit hard due to the natural calamity. They lamented they have only received mere condolences but no fundamental assistance. Demolished houses, ravaged trees and debris flow. This is the picture of Sharkila village in Gizar district of Gilgit Baltistan where flash floods triggered by torrential rains have wreaked havoc in recent days. Residents expressed though they have got temporary shelter, but they urgently need fundamental assistance to rebuild their lives, including reconstruction of dams, bridges and roads, which have been washed away. They lamented they have been hit hard twice due to the calamity in about two months, but have only got mere condolences. <laughs> हैं अच्छे पुल बनवाए यही हमारे लिए बिस्तर है सबसे पहले तो बाकी हमें कुछ नहीं चाहिए इन बनों की वजह से हम इस तरह दो दफा मुतासिर हुए हैं लोकल्स ब्लेम द कंटीन्यूअस इंटरवेंशन ऑफ पाकिस्तान इन द इल्लीगली ऑक्युपाइड रीजन हैज कॉज्ड मैसिव डिस्टरबेंसेस इन द इकोलॉजिकल बैलेंस लीडिंग टू सच डिजास्टर्स दो इट हैज बिकम एन एनुअल फिनोमेनन द करप्ट अथॉरिटीज हैव मेड नो लर्निंग एंड नो एफर्ट्स वर डन टू मिटिगेट द इफेक्ट्स Bangladesh is seeking bailout package from the International Monetary Fund as rising energy and food prices because of the Russia-Ukraine war have inflated its import bill and the current account deficit. The IMF on Wednesday said it is ready to support Bangladesh after the loan requests as the country becomes the latest South Asian nation to ask for assistance after Pakistan and Sri Lanka. The IMF, International Monetary Fund, said on Wednesday that it would discuss Bangladesh's loan request after the country became the third in South Asia to seek such support after Pakistan and Sri Lanka. Bangladesh's $416 billion economy has been one of the fastest growing in the world for years, but rising energy and food prices because of the Russia-Ukraine war have inflated its import bill and the current account deficit. An IMF spokesperson said that the IMF stands ready to support Bangladesh and the staff will engage with the authorities on program design as per the established policies and procedures of the fund. Earlier, Bangladesh's finance minister, AHM Mustafa Kamal, told reporters that the government would take an IMF loan only if conditions are favorable and said the country's macroeconomic conditions were fine. The country's economic mainstay is its export-oriented garments industry, which is bracing for a slowdown as key customers like Walmart are settled with backlog as inflation forces people to prioritize essentials. After garments, remittances are the second highest source of foreign currency for Bangladesh, 
a country of nearly 170 million people. Its foreign exchange reserves fell to 39.6 billion US dollars as of July 20, sufficient for just over five months' worth of imports from 45.5 billion US dollars a year earlier. At the Tashkent conference in Uzbekistan this week, delegations of over 20 countries exchanged dialogue on the security situation as well as the humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan. U.S. Special Envoy for Afghanistan Thomas West said that Washington stands ready to join partners in supporting dialogue among Afghans regarding a brighter and more inclusive future for their children. The U.S. Special Envoy for Afghanistan Thomas West said that Washington is ready to support dialogue among Afghans during the Tashkent Conference on Afghanistan held in Uzbekistan this week. West said on Twitter that no foreign country should handpick leaders or impose a process on Afghans. The United States stands ready to join partners in supporting dialogue among Afghans regarding a brighter and more inclusive future for their children, he added. U.S. Special Envoy for Afghan Women and Human Rights, Rina Amiri, also addressed the issue of restrictions on Afghan women and girls' education in Afghanistan. Taking to Twitter, she said that she stressed that security, economic stability and peace cannot be achieved without upholding the rights of women. The Tashkent conference was significant as it took place almost one year after Afghanistan fell to Taliban last August and countries exchanged dialogue on the security situation as well as the humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan. Notably, Uzbekistan has been the venue for key meetings related to Afghanistan. The conference saw participation by delegations from over 20 countries engaging in diplomatic relations with Afghanistan as well as prompted peace and security in the country. A 27-year-old calligrapher in India's northern Jammu in Kashmir has written the entire Quran on a 500-meter scroll that even earned him a world record. His work was put on display for devotees at a mosque in the federal territory's summer capital of Srinagar this week. 27-year-old calligrapher Mustafa Jamil from India's northern Jammu and Kashmir wrote the entire Quran on a 500-meter scroll, which was put on display for devotees at a mosque in the federal territory's summer capital of Srinagar on Wednesday. The Lincoln Book of Records recently considered Jamil's feat a world record. He hopes to promote calligraphy with his 500-meter long handwritten Quran, comprising 450 pages, which is 14.5 inch wide and 500 meters long. पहले शुरुआत की थी हैंडराइटिंग सुधारने के लिए जब मेरी हैंडराइटिंग सुधर गई तो वो मेरे लिए एक नई चीज थी कि मेरी आंखों के सामने कुछ नई चीज थी कि इंसान भी ऐसे लिख सकता है इतनी खूबसूरती के साथ तो बाद में फिर जब मैंने कुरान पाक तहरीर किया तो तब तक मुझे अंदाजा नहीं था मैं अपना शौक पूरा कर रहा था लेकिन बाद में लोगों के درمیان उसको बहुत पजीराई मिली तो फिर मुझे पता चला इस फील्ड के बारे में कि यह भी कोई फील्ड होता है जमील हु एम्ड एट क्रिएटिंग अवेयरनेस अमंग द यूथ ऑफ द वैली अबाउट द इस्लामिक रिलीजियस टेक्स्ट रोट इट ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ 6 मंथ्स हिज रिलेटिव्स आर मोर देन इलेटेड विद द रिकॉग्निशन हिज वर्क हैज अर्न्ड तो इसको करीबन 3 महीने राइटिंग में लिख, लगने लिखने को और एक महीने में इसने जो कुरान की बॉर्डर है वो बनाई है और साथ ही इसको मटेरियल जो भी लगता है इसके लिए दो महीना लग गया है अरेंज करने के में और अल्लाह का लाख लाख शुक्र है कि उसने मुस्फाइम ने जमील को इस काम के लिए चुना तो हम भी बहुत खुश हैं इस चीज से कैलिग्राफी इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर इज एन एंशिएंट आर्ट इट सफर्ड ड्यूरिंग द टाइम्स ऑफ इंसर्जेंसी बट अ रिवाइवल इन इंटरेस्ट इन द आर्ट हैज बीन सीन इन रीसेंट इयर्स well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. You're watching Tag TV. Number one multicultural channel, this is Tag TV.
Tag TV tags you news, views, and entertainment.